Okay. Last one for the day. Okay. Um, we talked about the... Um, in the last video, we did the ball sockets and stuff like that. Um, I showed you this stuff. And um, how we can build those. Um, oh, just, just, just for your own amusement, if you stop the print halfway through, you can see this is a typical 20% fill. They're not solid plastic. The computer's smart enough to know that it doesn't need to be that strong. Um, so it, it actually is just the outside piece, so that it doesn't take up quite that much plastic. And so you can just see it there. Okay, so we did these ball joints, and I talked about giving you the files for those. And I thought we'd just talk about them just a little bit. Let me go back to... This is, this is really where we left it last time. Um, I added a couple more... Um, features to the uh, to that the, the pin bar or the pin socket file that remember we had uh, the pin socket clear up here we included that uh, so it could stick all the code in there for us so we didn't have to worry about it let me just do this because I'm being consistent save as and this is going to be 7 okay so um let me turn off the hinge for the moment. I'm leaving them in there, commented out, so you can turn things on, turn things off, and see all these different things we're doing. Okay, so the, the next one that we're going to do is um, I, I put in some more code into the, the pin socket thing that we included. Here's, here's pin socket. And uh, let me make it bigger and then make the code bigger. And I... I added this ball X, ball S, and they're commented out, they don't count, and socket X to our, our routines. Okay, so let me let me move this back off to the side, and since they're already there, we just have to call them. So hinge is gone now, so if I click in here, if I hit the F5, it all goes away. Um, let me just bring one in. Let me say I'm going to do the socket X. And it needs a number. And this is the diameter of the, the ball and socket. And right now we're just going to use 10. Okay, so this is a socket. You know, I can connect anything I want over here. And it doesn't really matter. What you want to make sure is that it, it overlaps this, this piece a little bit. But not too much. So, I mean, if I want a rod on the end of this thing, um, you know, you would do... Uh, it's going to be translated. Translate. I'm not sure how much yet. And um, it's going to be a cube. And then I want to put the cube dimensions. And uh, I'm going to. It's going to be long in the x direction. And uh, let's go for 10 millimeter vertical. Okay, so I want um, X dimension, let's make it 50. I want it um, uh, in the Y direction, which is kind of toward me in a way. Let's do that as five. And the vertical's gotta be 10, I believe. Okay, let's see what that does. And it's gonna be in the wrong spot, okay. You know, it'll be closer if I wanna center that. So I'm just gonna say center equals true. Is that going to be closer? Uh, I'm not so sure it helps much. Okay. Oh, actually it does. It, it's um, The big thing we want to make sure is at the bottom that we have this at the same level as this. Okay, so we're right where we should be, except we need to slide it all over. Okay, because I, I can't have anything in the middle of that socket. And that's the X direction, and I need to translate it. Um, let's, let's go for 25. You know, it's got to go the other way. So let's go minus 25. And then that's still in the middle of our thing. It looks like it's probably another, almost another 10. Let me go for 10. Okay, so that connects. I'm, I'm suspecting I'm a zero width again. So let me go just a smidge less than 35. Let's go 34.9. I'm just trying to avoid problems at some point. Okay. So now I've got a bar on that thing. And, you know, it's centered at the origin, which is just fine. So now what I want to do is I need a, a ball for that. 
So um, the other thing we can include, um, we've got two different types of balls. I got ball S. I'll make that 10. And you can see that it's already got some sort of connection on that. That may not be quite the thing I want, but I could, I could put another bar on this and just stick it on there and go right over the top of these things and, and, and that would connect. And then the other one is ball X. And ball X does that. And that goes up. Now remember, I, I've got to print, everything's got to be connected to the print bed as we print. So one of them is set up so that the that actually goes straight up with some sort of connection. So you're a little bit restricted as to where this can connect to without, so you can build without supports. But if I'm just going to have a rod sticking up in the air and maybe it has a hole through the side of it, you know, that could, that'll work just fine. So you get to pick what you want to do. Now, as you look carefully in here, you can see that this really doesn't touch, which is our criteria. I mean, for when we print, but this will allow me to I can actually print them as separate pieces and it flexes enough where I can snap them together or unsnap them if I need to. And, you know, that's kind of how we can make this go. So let me go back to the, to the ball S. And as I said, whatever I put out here also has to be directly flat with this surface. So if I decide I wanted the bar in there, I can do the same thing. I could say... In fact, it's going to be so close. Let me just copy it. Copy, paste. But that puts it on top of the other one. I want to go stick it out the other way. So let's stick it uh, plus. Okay. Well, that's not quite where I want it, but it's close. So I'm a little bit too far over. So let me just, just, just notch that back a little bit. Let's go back to 30. You know, that looks pretty good on the bottom. That that would work. Um, I've got a little bit of a notch here. I could I could bring it back farther. Let's go back 25. That takes it in line with the center of that sphere. Okay, no, that makes sense. So if I print this out, it will be flexible at this joint. And I can, you know, and, and kind of do whatever I want with it. Just one more thing to give you options of how to build something and, and pieces that you can build. I know it's a lot to digest. Don't, don't, I'm not expecting everybody to just understand the ramifications of, of adding these two shapes and then being able to build wonderful things. But, you know, it's, it's, you, you start somewhere and you try for ideas. And then uh, the nice thing about the printer is it doesn't cost that much to, to try things. So, once we start building stuff, I'll start printing stuff for you, and then we'll go from there. So with what we had before and these last uh, three videos that I've done today, um, I think that should be enough to to handle all the body construction. You know, you may want to think about, okay, what well, how do I have a cube and uh, stuff? Oh, the, the cube that we're dropping off. Um I will, um, I, I need to include that. Um, the cube that we're dropping off is like this. It's a 20 millimeter on a edge square and it's got a, a hole in the hole in, in each direction. And um, I'll just print these out and give them to you. But you know, it's 20 millimeters on edge and the hole in the middle, I believe is five millimeters in diameter that goes through and there's three holes. So they're all connected in the middle. And I'll just, I'll just print these out and, and let you guys, you know, have one to hold on to so you can figure out if your design's going to work or not. And, the, you know, the goal is, is you're starting out 1.2 meters from a wall. You, you go forward until you're at one meter. You drop this thing off to the side. And then you, if you want to do the rest of it, then you go back to where you started and stop. And that whole thing goes when you push the button. Now, for the electronics and stuff like that, um... Once you've got your program working wonderfully on the Arduino with the cables and connected to your computer, that's going to be in the way. So what we'll do is we'll use a really, really short um, 
USB cable, power cable, and we'll just use, you know, something like this, which is a standard cell phone USB power supply. So this will give us our power to run the motor and actually walk down the row and, and, and do the stuff. So, okay. Um, that's it for this. Um, we'll probably end up shooting a few more videos for the programming, but um, I think we should be good to go for a start on this. Have fun.